We are back for finals. Dennis Geisler, Arnie Wolf, fresh uh, off the uh, semifinal defeat. Yeah, crazy matchup. <laughs> uh, congratulations crazy to match. Brandon. We're going to see him be playing here in a minute. But We are. And Brandon's going to be up against uh, Keanu Inosanto. Yes. Um, and you know what's interesting with this team? I, I've been talking about this team a lot recently because I think it's actually having a resurgence. For some reason, every single of the past three regionals we've seen of this exact team has top cut. And it, we're going to see it right now. It's Kiana's on the left with that Flutter main, Ogre Pond, Wellspring, Chiyu, Glamora, Urshifu. This one is uh, Single Strike and uh, last but not least, Tornius Infinite. While Brandon's on the right with, as we just saw, the Indie D, Female, Gallade, Iron Moth, Ogre Pond, Wellspring, Ursaluna, Heatsweet Form, and Iron Crown. But yeah, I think this team that Keanu has has kind of just become a anti-meta staple. It is so strong with the choice specs to you, booster energy, flutter main with icy wind to just kind of chip some stuff off. You've got um, sunny day on tornadoes to just boost that to use power. You can lead so many different things. It's just a really, really good combo. But obviously, don't underestimate Brandon. As we saw in the last match, he's done spectacularly. That Iron Moth is going to put some pressure onto really everything. The Fluttermane, the Chiyu, but that Glamora. It's going to be a battle of the Meteor Beams. Yeah, I was going to say, the the uh, Brandon's team also has a lot of weird answers to things. I mean, you can never underrate Psy Spam, and you can never underrate the... Uh, Trick Room. There's a lot of opportunity to Trick Room on Brandon's team, so if Keanu ever wants to get a Tailwind up, uh, that might not be the best idea. Oh, let's kick it off. We're starting with the Iron Moth Ogre Pond combo that we just saw a minute ago, and Keanu going to lead with Ogre Pond Chiyu. So I think what's interesting here is, first off, this um, Iron Moth has the potential to be faster, depending on whatever stats Brandon put in, and that is very dangerous because it could just go ahead and pretty much affect this ogre pawn it possibly knocking out we don't know the calculation on iron moth but it's gonna do solid let's say i'm almost certain that iron moth is faster than ogre pawn and she yeah there's a good chance um and then at this point you just doing the beam. math in my head <laughs> i think you just set up meteor beam and uh redirect there's nothing she you can really do maybe yeah the only thing is do you terra your ogre pawn and both sides have that question mm-hmm yeah, I guess worst case scenario, we are going to see the Ogre Pond follow me on Brandon's side. Which means it's not going to be that on Keanu's side. It's going to be the Meteor Beam uh, coming up next from the Iron Moth. That's launching into the Chi. That's, uh, that, that's a that's a gone fish. Yeah, that's the one, th one thing that's really scary about facing Pokemon like Iron Moth is you yep. do not know that calculation. There it goes. And it just, yeah, that Chiyu just sat there and decided, uh, I'm gonna just leave now. <laughs> no more to you. It's the Horn Leech from Keanu's. Maybe predicting a Terra Water, uh, follow me and trying to get a bunch of damage in there. Yeah. But, uh, that's not how things turned out. <laughs> no, I think that was a good prediction, though. This this Tornadus is in an interesting spot. You do have Bleak Wind Storm, and it really depends, I think, on what the Tornadus is set is. On this team, generally, it runs bulk. But if it is faster, that's big, because you're able to go for a Bleak Wind Storm, get rid of the Ogre Pond, and then take a hit from the Iron Moth and go for an Ivy Cudgel onto it. The thing is, you gotta hit the Bleak Wind Storm, and you gotta hope that Brand inside does not tear the Ogre Pond. So you can also go for Tailwind, but then, like you said, there's that Trick Room looming, looming in the back. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. If, if you're seeing these Pokemon right now, you can at least feel a little bit comfortable that uh, Tailwind is a decent call, but the problem is, you're <laughs> either way, you might lose your uh, Tornadus, which is not ideal. Uh, the following is good for Keanu. It only means, it, it means that just the Iron Moth is hitting against this Tailwind. Is a sludge wave. I've not seen the sludge wave yet. Uh, let's see how much this does. This is also going to attack oh, yeah, Brandon's well. own Ogre Pond. <laughs> I forgot that the sludge wave also hits the ally. So uh, Brandon's Ogre Pond is what gets knocked out there. But you know what? I'm not going to lie. That's actually quite smart. It's not bad. Because in DD is... I don't think either one of these two yeah. is going to get to... NDD is going to be able to go down to. I think NDD stays up no matter what. And at that point, you click Trick Room, you... Uh, then just click <laughs> Yeah, you could you could, you, even could you could protect Trick Room here. And, yeah, that's uh, the strat. Get, get pretty cleanly uh, get the Trick Room out of the way. Yeah, and I think that might be the the only answer for Keanu is uh, Terra Water, Ivy Cudgel, and see <laughs> see if you can get enough damage and maybe a crit. Pretty much. Um, this is very something you cannot underestimate because it's a one in eight chance to crit. Yeah, and so like twelve point five percent. Yep, it's a he's a. That's but not that bad. <laughs> it is probably max defense indeed. 
Um, which is oh oh bleak wind yeah the bleak wind goes first iron moth oh iron protecting moth didn't protect yeah that was weird uh, it's not that bad no. actually if if you think you're only gonna get hit by bleak wind then why not it, and it means that you can just uh, launch out your attacks indeed he does take the hit barely <laughs> and you get a you get a nice little uh, well the P wave's not gonna do that much unless oh, hey <laughs> it's the stream curse it's the stream <laughs> curse. <laughs> Yeah, that was a pretty solid burn there. Uh, I think it's still a really good spot for Brandon, obviously, with the, the Trick Room up. It, this is a very, very good spot to just go ahead and put anything, honestly. <laughs> There's not much Sludge Wave at this point. Yeah, I mean, follow me <laughs> and then bye Sludge bye Wave. <laughs> yeah, that's really not a bad option. Uh, you don't even have to follow me. Nothing's... Uh... Uh, Iron Moth will go first. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Iron Moth will go first and <laughs> defeat the NDD. Somehow Iron Moth is the fastest Pokemon <laughs> in Trick Room right now. Iron Crown yeah. being the last Pokemon. Yeah. Was expecting your Sluna, so it's a bit of a surprise there, but it's a good surprise. Um, very useful there for Brandon. Well, it means it'll tank the uh, Sludge Wave. It yes. won't take any damage to that. Oh, but another Heat Wave. Oh, it's out. gonna be the Heat Wave. And it's a miss on Tornadus. It's Tornadus again. That's pretty bad for. Ooh, and it does crit the Ogre Pond. I was wondering why that did so much. And that, that's actually really bad for Brandon, like, on multiple counts, because Iron Moth is done. That's that's Iron Moth for the day. It's not terrible, because it, there's one thing that is a bit concerning, which is that Pokemon in the back, which is going to be... We, we know it's the issue. Brandon does. Ooh, Miss Bleak Wind. I mean, it wouldn't really matter, to be honest. A, a little bit of chip is never a bad thing. No. Especially against something that right now is in a really good spot. Don't forget that Brandon has not used uh, his Terra yet, which could be that Terra Water on Iron Crown. Just mm -hmm. ensure the KO. I think right now you just click Dazzling Gleam and expanding force. Um, yeah. There's nothing of these two that's going to survive that. Yeah, the Ogre Pond Spiky Shield is definitely the play. But there is one thing that is just a little more concerning, and that is that once you get the Tailwind gone on Keanu's side, mm -hmm. this Ogre Pond could outspeed the Iron Crown, and then the Urshifu could outspeed the Iron Crown. Yeah. And so you really gotta play your Terra on water accordingly. The Iron Crown does have a very precise speed tier. <laughs> yeah. Um, both Ogre Pond and both this Ur Ogre Pond and the Urshifu are almost the exact same speed for Keanu. Um, Ogre Pond barely faster. Um, so we're not. It's not a hundred percent clear what's going to be faster here. I think it's going to be close. I think the Iron Crown is still faster under these conditions. But the so. problem is that you can't um, expanding force. I, I think I think you I think you have to tachyon cutter the Urshifu, which also feels bad because yeah. it could protect. I think you dazzling gleam right now and then maybe go for an expanding force, Terra Water maybe. expanding force, and then just. You gotta tear water, obviously, to survive a yeah. good blow, but then you really want to get rid of that Ogre Pond, mm -hmm. so then the Tachyon Cutter can pick up the KO. And at that point, yeah. if Urshifu does protect right now, if it doesn't protect, it it gets uh, broken, it's Sash broken because of Dazzling mm -hmm. Blade. If it does protect, then... The Sash isn't that important, because Tachyon Cutter is the only thing that's really gonna... Yeah, although, just a little bit of chip, from my experience playing Iron Crown... Uh, get the Terra. It's probably gonna do the Terra Water there. Uh, uh yeah. Uh, but with my experience playing Iron Crown, you have to, it, it's a roll whether or not you one-hit KO or Shifu mm -hmm. uh, if you're playing max speed. If this is a modest set, though, it's it's over. Yeah, I, I think it's modest. I, I think we've seen it. <laughs> we've seen it, uh, Oko and Urshifu, Ur uh, earlier today. Then it's this Iron Crown. Fine. Yeah, there's the Dazzling there's Gleam. There's the Dazzling Gleam. And, uh, oh yeah, my it goodness. Matter. Wow. <laughs> oh, there's the critical hit on Ogre Pond. There's a little bit of extra damage. We can blow. Uh, not going to knock out the Iron Crown. The Tachyon Cutter into the Ogre Pond. And that should be just about it for game number one. I think, yeah. At this point, I really think there's any way out of this one for Keanu. Um, I think you're right. I I, th I think you either get hit by Dazzling Gleam <laughs> or by Tachyon Cutter. Yep. <laughs> I don't think there's any way to not get hit by one of those two moves. Yeah. I think you... I Because I think this stalls out the last turn of Protect... Or the last turn of Trick Room. But we did see that that Iron Crown is going to outspeed Urshifu, so... Yeah, I think there was one really big... Not necessarily misplay, but tough situation, which was that Chiyu just getting obliterated by the Iron Moth. Mm. If the Chiyu is still here, it may have been a different story. Yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised that we did not see the follow me out of the Ogre Pond on turn yeah. number one. And I think that would have changed things pretty significantly. Yeah. Um, could have even just Terra'd the Chiyu and gone for Dark Pulse. And I may have been better. Could have gone for that as well, but I, I don't think that would have been that uh, meaningful of a change. Yeah. Um, and there is that knockout. And I guess 
getting Meteor Beam sent into your Ogre Pond probably would have been not ideal um, with the Beads of Ruin up. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think Chiyu is just a weird brain for that matchup. Or it, it's not that it was a weird brain. It just, it just matched up really badly against the leads. And yeah. it, it felt really bad to have on the field. Felt really bad to switch out. Felt just bad to have around that matchup. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, we'll see if there are changes. I, and Brandon's a player who tends to switch up uh, leads for game number two after yeah. winning game number one. Uh, I do think that it is... I don't think you bring in Flutterman on this one. It's just too much that can... It, it doesn't have a ghost move, so obviously it's just basically a sitting duck against size spam. I do mm -hmm. think that if you, I think it was the right four for Keanu, although I was Tornius didn't really add much. I wouldn't be surprised if we see just a lead with Ogre Punk Glamora. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was think, gonna say I, I yeah. think I like Glamora a little more than yeah. Chiyu. I I think I wouldn't be, I, I would actually think Chiyu is even solid. Yeah, even both of them I don't hate. I don't know. <sighs> it's a tough one. I, I didn't do, hate the tornadoes. No tornadoes. Yeah. I feel like you dub, you need double dark if you are up against side spam. Yeah. But Iron Crown still has that Terra Water, which is definitely going to save, and that's tricky against Chiyu. I wouldn't even be surprised if we see just a lead with Lamora or Shifu. That's a solid combo. It puts pressure on Iron Moth right away, and frankly, it also puts pressure on Ogre Pond. And depending on who's faster, if this Glamora is max speed, then you could just go ahead and just get rid of um, the. Um, Ogre Pond on Brandon's side, and then have that Urshifu pick up a Wicked Blow, depending on whether or not it Terra's and the stats, but it's a good mm -hmm. play, and then Iron Moth can't really touch Glamora with any mm -hmm. move, that, so I think it, it forces that switch out, which is really good, especially if you have Chiyu in the back, for if this is Psy Spam, like we saw in the last match, I think that would be the play. Yeah, and this Glamora is Earth Power we saw earlier, um, which means that it it kind of just dumpsters the Iron Moth if it's around. Iron Moth Ogre Pond, once again for Brandon. I lied earlier when I said that uh, it doesn't change his team. <laughs> Kiana with the Glamora Chiyu, as uh, we spoke about. And yeah, I like this a lot more because at this point, the Iron Moth is just, is kind of just Meteor Beam bait. <laughs> yeah. um, and Ogre Pond can try to turn that around, but I don't know, I, at that point, I think Brandon's best bet right now is to protect the Iron Moth and go for a, a KO on the Chiyu. Because, yeah. I mean, y you know you'll take a hit. Uh, the question is, uh, is Gilmore going to target the Ogre Pond then? Because yeah, Ogre Pond actually, is the threat. I'll say this quietly to you. He's actually, uh, like, I think one point faster than the Ogre Pond is it? at level 50. It's one or two points faster than the Ogre Pond. The Chiyu will actually go first here. This is a slow, this is a, a slow Ogre Pond. Uh, as we can say, it's it's a double protect, it's a, scout, a scouting turn. That's smart. I, I like that. But that um, does, I, I don't, I actually kind of don't like that because now you're giving Glamora plus one uh, and not forcing it to Meteor Beam. Now now, now you're opening up Glamora's options way more. I think it's okay. Um, and, and and here's why. I think if you tear your water, tear to water and just follow me, there's really nothing that these people can do. Although that's the fair. Snarl on Chiyu coming out is actually a big plus because it allows you to go ahead and switch out Glamora Mm. Um, so, I'm sorry, switch out Iron Moth and then knock out the Glamora or force it to tear it a grass on that turn. And mm -hmm. if you switch it to Iron Crown, yeah, you'll be at minus one and it may do a solid amount of damage, but you're able to just go in and after that, pretty much ensure that you're able to just sweep. Yeah, the, because this, you're going to be faster than the, the two. The speed tiers here are ludicrous. Looking yeah. at this, Chiyu is one or two points faster than Ogre Pond, which is one point faster than Glamora at level 50. <laughs> Crazy. Um, that's that, that's the thing. It's it's the tiniest differences in how you train these Pokemon <laughs> that can decide really important things in games like this. It's gonna be uh, Iron Moth staying in using the Heat Wave. Chiu gets a Snarl off as a second uh, Pokemon to go here. Ogre Pond takes a pretty decent chunk there, but Ogre Pond will go next now. Uh, Ivy Cudgel into the Glamora that should uh, absolutely knock it out. Yeah, I feel like a switch out drops the Toxic de Debris. I feel like it's not a terrible play. I was. And uh, the heat wave was very smart because you want to scout up for that, going for the um, era. But I, I, it's interesting because it, yeah, I, I think Brandon may have been safer switching. I, I just because this Urshifu coming in now gets a really, really nice wicked blow onto any, um, yeah. and especially if the two in the back are the same as the last match, then it's, it is in a good spot. And I think that. If you go for another Snarl and then 
a wicked blow onto yeah, the tough one. The, the thing, the tough part is it's the ogre pawn speed. So if if this Urshifu is faster, then a snarl plus wicked blow should be able to get rid of the ogre pawn, and at that point, Iron Moth can't really do anything, and it will be at minus two. So I think that's the play: is to just go for wicked blow, snarl again, and hope that you're faster. <laughs> oh, brings the meteor beam come out, and Chiyu is still in play. Yeah. It, it is a neutral. It, it, Iron Moth's now at neutral special attack here, so this isn't. It, it's probably gonna. It's probably gonna knock out the Chiu. Let's, so. let's be real. It's probably gonna knock, 20 ooh, HP, does not 20 knock HP. out the Chiu. <laughs> Close combat going before the Ogre Pond picks up yep. that knockout. Yeah, and uh, then we get this uh, another snarl out of the Chiu. That was really good. Close combat, strong wicked blow against a neutral target. I might have been sure. predicting the Ursaluna switch, and Snarl's not going to finish off the Iron Moth. That actually is a little concerning. Okay, it's not as much anymore. anymore. Yeah. Not as much anymore. <laughs> if you brought an Iron Crown, you could have just gone for the, yeah. the Tachyon Cutter, and that would have been really tight. But right now, I think it's still not a great position for Keanu because there is Iron Crown on the back looming with that potential to get rid of you, but... The nice thing is you do have Ogre Pawn in the back ready to go with a Terra. So yeah, that's the thing. Like right now, you are you have to feel decent at least if you're Brandon. Because worst case scenario, the Iron Moth lingers a little bit. And yeah. that's not the worst thing in the world. No. I think you definitely stay in with the Chi Doop Snarl and then protect or detect your Urshifu. Yeah. If it goes down, you get Ogre Pawn out. If it doesn't go down, then knock out the Iron Moth. Yeah, then you knock out the Iron Moth and do huge chunk to the Indeedee. We're going to see the Tarrasco. It is the Indeedee. Terra Fairy. The one thing I want to note is because of mm. that... Honestly, that's a good good for Keanu as well, predicting a potential like Wicked Blow or whatever into that, but that also means that like there is no damage into the <laughs> yeah. um, Indeedee now. Um, one thing I, that is very important, though, is this Iron Moth can no longer reliably go for a sludge wave. Will he wave it? It does. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, but, but the Chiyu takes it! Ooh, the Chiyu actually takes the hit. Okay, well, <laughs> we may be going to game three. <laughs> I... This is going to be close. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. I, I, the, Iron the, Crown the, the problem is so, somebody has to do... Well, uh, nobody technically has to do damage to the Ndidi. The Ndidi will actually finish off the Chiyu. Um, nobody has to do damage to the Ndidi because the Ndidi is poisoned. But uh, if Iron Crown comes in and is even able to take a hit or able to allow Ndidi to get a Dazzling Gleam off or something. Like, there is no... The, the, the Surgeon does, like, nothing against the Ndidi. It's gonna be close. Is I, the point. Uh, I'm not... Here's the thing. This Iron Crown gets... gets hit pretty hard by an Urshifu, but it hits Urshifu pretty hard. Remember, this Urshifu is at minus... Uh, minus defense, minus special defense. Off I, of the close combat. So attack and cutter definitely can. Attack and cutter 110% KOs. I don't think that's actually what you I think right now your Ogre Pond Terra's water. I think it's at PD. And then you check yeah, or sorry, uh, spiky shield. And then it's gonna come down to how much Iron Crown does. And at this point, with Urshifu at Focus Ash, if you focus it, it's gonna come you and can't you, hit both. You have to either focus the say, or I say, I, I, you, you need to repeat that play to me. <laughs> I think you Ivy Cudgel the NDD and then um, go for a hit on the Iron Crown with the Urshifu okay. if you're Keanu. Because Iron Crown, it can, it can go for an Expanding Force, but then it doesn't hurt it, Urshifu, and it's Focus Sash. Or they could go for the Tachyon Cutter, but then it's a full health Ogre Pond, essentially. Just chipped by the Ndidi, uh, at worst. And then it's just, you have to focus on one. We'll see the Terra Water Ogre Pond. I mean, that's going to be a problem as well, just breaking through this thing. Uh, especially given that the Ndidi's poisoned. The Toxic Debris actually uh, putting in work right now. Uh, the, it, it's good for just a little bit of chip. It's, it's nice sash. to be just a little bit annoying. Yeah. Uh, there's the Ndidi follow me. I'm gonna draw just... away attention. I I kind of like that actually to try to get the Tachyon Cutter down. I, I I think yeah, and I think the big thing here, the Ogre Pond, Ivy Cudgel. I'm curious how much this does. Not enough to KO. Might be enough for Poison to KO. Tachyon Cutter will destroy that Urshifu. Um. Uh, let, hold, hold for poison damage. I don't yeah. think poison's enough to finish this off right now. I think you've, you've got a spike heal. And yeah. Just Which, yeah, that is a nice... Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, it does? Oh, it does. Okay. So, uh, it doesn't really matter that much, because spiky shield would have stalled it out yeah. anyways. Okay, so okay. I think keon has got still... There's one strategy that, that's actually really nice, but um, it, I don't think it necessarily would have mattered, because you're probably still going to want to spiky shield this turn anyways. Check how many turns the psychic terrain has. 
three. So spiky three shield, turns. Ivy Cudgel, spiky shield. Yeah. Kind of obvious play, but it's the play you gotta make. Yeah, and uh, at the end of the day, it'll it'll end up being a matchup of how much damage, <laughs> how, how much damage gets launched out by this expanding force versus the damage that's launched out by the Ivy Cudgel. They've come down to a crit. Yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is gonna do just about half with the with the psychic train up. With the psychic train up. Oh, but the Ivy Cudgel goes yeah, first. Yeah, Ivy Cudgel does go first. The Sogar Pond's faster. It's a faster pond. That does good damage. It two of them, two of them will do it. Banning force. That's also very good damage. Oh, if that was a crit, if either one of those was the crit, it would have decided yeah, the game. It absolutely would have. That Ivy Cudgel just picking it up for Keanu, and we're going to game three. That was a intense one. <laughs> that Chiyu taking just two HP remaining off of the heat wave. Like, the Chiyu just kept lingering around. We thought it was going to get taken down by the Meteor Beam. It didn't. We thought it was going to get taken down by the heat wave. It didn't. I mean, you wonder to an extent, did Brandon get a little bit greedy with some of that? Like, oh, I can't hit my Indeedy with Sludge Wave. I have to use Heat Wave. Yeah, oh. that type of stuff really gets into your head when you're thinking, it like... It does. If it, Especially when you're playing against Pokemon that you don't tend to play against a lot yeah. of the time. It's like, okay, how much does my Iron Moth uh, at neutral Meteor Beam do against Chiyu? Like, not even a plus one Meteor Beam, just a neutral Meteor Beam. How much does this do against a Chiyu? It's like... These Pokemon don't see each other all that often. These no. calcs aren't uh, super obvious. That's one thing that I actually genuinely has been really crazy for with Brandon. Like what I was saying earlier, playing against him, you know, you make these calcs. Like I had a Golden Go. I thought it was going to knock out the Earth Luna. It doesn't. You have Iron Moth. You have Golden. Or you have um, Earth Luna. You have Iron Crown. Nobody else is using Iron Crown. Oh no, no, this is not a, gr a common team, and that mm. is exactly why I think not only. Is that part of why Brandon's doing so well? But he knows how to pilot it. He know yeah. he knows everything that the opponents don't, and that has been a mm -hmm. very very valuable play. Not but to that's the problem with Keanu is that Keanu's team it's gotten a lot more popular. But even still, like that Chiyu calc wasn't perfectly done, and that's a big part of the reason why Brandon lost that game. Yeah. And I think in this match you just go for the. I, I would actually go for the same thing. I, I know there was a few risky plays that Keanu made good really really good reads mm -hmm. but I, I think you gotta at least save ogre pond for the very end and yeah. you have to save the terra on it because mm -hmm. that is going to be the key so i would not be surprised one bit if brandon swaps it up and decides you know what i'm done with iron moth for the day i'm going for <laughs> hard trick room. <laughs> hard trick room time and yeah it's, no it's, it's seriously possible especially looking at the pokemon like there's ursa luna just handles a lot of uh, these pokemon very nicely after a burn so yeah, I don't, and Galley, Galley, you cannot underestimate how much damage Galley does. I mean, yeah. it's, it's that, that that sharpness boost in Psycho Cut and Sacred Sword are serious damage. Like the Sacred Sword, I know that Dondozo, like it, it breaks through the plus two Dondozo, but just against Dondozo, it two hits Dondozo, and that's so much defense on Dondozo, yeah. regardless. It's insane. We are gonna get right into game three here, seeing the leads. Are we for all see? the marbles? Yes, this is going and. Uh, one thing I, I know is interesting, we're going to have a new champion for the first time in three PCs. Yeah. Is it going to be Brandon or Keanu? And we're going to see the same lead on Brandon's side. Same lead three games in a row. It's the Chiyu Urshifu this time. Interesting. So the... Right off the bat, the Urshifu is the fastest thing on the... No. The Iron Moth is the fastest thing on the field. It's Iron Moth, Urshifu, Chiyu, Ogre Pond. I think that's actually a pretty solid play here. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we saw that this Urshifu has the Ogre Pond. Yes, so it does. swap on into Glamora. Just swap into Glamora, go for a close combat or wicked blow on the Ogre Pond, and then um, go back into Chiyu, and then get your snarls off. And that should be solid. I would probably close combat because I think it does slightly more. But I just wouldn't risk going down to another meteor beam. And Glamora, we saw it put in a lot of work with the toxic debris, and I think it also, if you sacrifice one Pokemon here, that's the one you want to sacrifice. See the Ogre Pond follow me. No switch outs. Uh, it will be... Oh, we're gonna see. First, the Iron Moth going to go for the Meteor Beam. That is, uh, correctly called right into the Chiyu. That's a one-hit knockout. We saw that in game number one. Uh... Oh, and it is yeah. into the Chiyu. That's gonna be the knockout. I can imagine Keanu trying to call out a read or something like that, saying, okay, actually, you're just going to target my Urshifu, or... Uh, not gonna go for Meteor Beam or whatever. Close combat, uh, just a little under eight and a half for the Ogre Pond, and we'll see. Oh, wait, the Ogre Pond already went 
with the uh, follow me. So oh, it's Tornius Nakamura. Ooh, not that's an ideal. No, not not an ideal start if you are Keanu. Yeah, that's. I think Gomora was the call here, just to put pressure on Iron Moth. I think you gotta go Tornadus. I um, think you have to go Tornadus. And Bleak Wind Storm, and then probably Detect on Ursha. Potentially, yeah. Basically, I think if you're Keanu, you just want to get it back to that same end game that you had the last match, because that is favorable, seeing how much damage the Ivy Cudgel Terra did. Mm -hmm. But to get into that position is a lot tougher now. And so maybe we could, I mean, you could go for the Bleak Wind and then we could blow onto the Iron yeah, Moth. Yeah, I'm not 110% not sure about Iron Moth's speed versus Tornadus' speed. If Tornadus goes first, well, Ogre Pond will spike his shield first. Tornadus goes first, Bleak Wind speed drop? Oh, it is faster. Bleak Wind? Hold. Does connect onto the Iron Moth. Speed drop? No, no speed, speed drop. drop. Sludge Wave connects. Uh, it won't knock out the Urshifu, though, because um, it's, uh, regardless, it has the Sash. Yeah. That does so much damage. It really does. <laughs> it really does. That's insane. Uh, and so Wicked Blow comes out, and that should finish off the Iron Moth. Yeah, it does. That was a good call. That and was that, a very good call. One thing that's important to know is this is a faster Tornado. So yeah. that is, like I said, most of the time they've been playing in bulk. Speed is going to help here. But NDD is ideal, especially when knowing that... If you're Brandon, you pay attention to the last match, you're going, oh, Iron Crown is slower than Ogre Pond? We're going to change that and go for Trick Room. Mm -hmm. I think right now you just, you definitely click follow me on, on Ogre Pond and Trick Room. And I think that's going to be a very difficult combo. Right. Do, do, does, Indeedy, does Indeedy have to Terra here is the problem. Because uh, if Ogre Pond yeah. gets dropped by Bleak Wind, Indeedy has to Terra. Which then means you don't get to keep your Terra around, which can, I don't know, feel kind of awkward towards the end. There is the Terra. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's got to be the NDD. Yeah, I think it's the right play. <laughs> because, you you know, the only thing that it would be scary would be, like I said, the Ogre Pond water. And at that point with Iron Crown, yeah, Terra. Terraing to water is a 50-50 call on that because, you know, you could just get Horn Leech back. Mm -hmm. So I think it is the ideal play to Terra, the NDD carry. Mm -hmm. And that means the NDD will indeed take the hit. Uh... Even the close combat drops the attack, uh, the defense and special defense again, but uh, it's gonna be dropped to the next thing. And there's the trick room. There's something about trick room this format that I think is just really good, really, yeah. really good. There's so many slower Pokemon. Well, and I think it's it's even even more than that. It's the fact that so many things are not prepared for trick room. Like it, it and that's the thing where it's like. Trick Room fell off a little bit from Regulation E time and even Regulation D a little bit, but that meant that it came back into prevalence because people stopped prepping for it as uh, strongly. Yep. And that, I think we're seeing that right now with Brandon. We saw a few Trick Room teams, uh, at least three Porygon or NDD teams in the top eight today. So that is a just a massive chunk. And I think right now we're going to see Brandon exploit that by going for Dazzling Gleam plus Expanding Force combo. There's n these two definitely do not take that. We know NDD is going to be fastest in Trick Room, and that's yeah. bigger into Urshifu. And then we also know that the Iron Crown is going to be faster than Tornadus, and Expanding yeah. Force can handle that. Yeah, and you can't Sucker Punch in terrain. That would have possibly made a little difference, but yeah, I think... Yeah, I don't think you can stall out the terrain, <laughs> but <laughs> that was a good strategy. I think strategy. you can, but I like the, I like the idea. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the mythical quadruple protect. <laughs> Tornadus is actually going to eat that hit, but uh, not going to eat the Expanding Force, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, you know what? Here's what Keanu's endgame is to possibly take this, and it's a, it's a big if. Big if. You have to go for the Terra uh -huh. right now. Get rid of the NDD. Yeah. Protect until the uh, ex Trick Room expires, uh -huh. and then crit your Terra uh, Water Ivy Cudgel. That okay. is that is basically the game. You need a double protect and you need a crit. You could possibly, or you target the Iron Crown right now. Yeah, I think the thing is, it's like if. Uh, well, the thing is, Indeedy is just gonna get a dazzling gleam off. I think you have to go for the mythical time. quadruple protect. <laughs> I mean, that's the best thing we could do at this point. Uh, 
There's the, yeah, there's the Terra Water finally coming out for the Ogre Pond. Gonna get that special defense boost. It will be reasonably tanky. It's gonna, it's gonna take it. I actually think right now, to be honest, you target NDD, and there's a specific reason why. Yeah. Helping Hand exists. And yeah. that is a, that, I think a Helping Hand expanding force could potentially... Ooh, there's the second one. There's the second detect. No. <laughs> <laughs> It was a Dazzling Gleam, not the Helping Hand, which could actually be pretty meaningful because that Dazzling Gleam will do nothing to that Ogre Pond, I would imagine. That's honestly better than I was anticipating, if 27 Keanu, damage. Keanu may actually have a much better matchup than I'm expecting because it's going to come down to the Expanding Force. How much does Expanding Force do? That's a lot of damage. That's a lot more damage than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> if this is targeted on the NDD, then it's... Yeah, that's a good That's a good call. ndd has gone. Okay. I'm pretty sure... You have to, you have to target. Okay, yeah. You, right, um, we have you have two to turns of trick cutter. room left. Yeah. You have to attack Young Cutter, and I think Keanu actually can pick this one up. Keanu can pick this one up. Is he, yeah, you can't. You, you have to hit the Urshifu. I think you double target the Iron Crown with the Wicked Wall. If, yeah, if you just hit right now. Ooh, actually. Actually, oh, though. Hold on. Hold on a second. That's, that's actually it. the right call. Follow me from the Ogre Pond. It will pull away a Tachyon Cutter, if that's the decision. A wicked Blow, going first against the Iron Crown, and picks up the <laughs> knockout. Keanu takes the win! That was a just insane play. That double, that double detect. <laughs> the double detect. <laughs> double detect for the win. I mean, that is just insane. That... Uh, you can't <laughs> you cannot this is why pokemon is so unpredictable you cannot rely on that usually the 33 percent chance i think that that one play decided who won that entire tournament it just came down to that one detect and that shows you that even when you're in the red and you don't know what to do take a risk it could work it did for keanu and it just brilliant job by both players i mean that is just such an exciting match and going into like is it gonna happen is it gonna detect are you gonna follow me so many different options it was just a very entertaining match to watch yeah there were so many little micro adjustments throughout that uh series between those two players really well played even down the line like aside from the the luck that goes into a double protect and all of that just so well played to figure out what the win condition was all throughout it uh, crazy <laughs> crazy crazy game crazy tournament uh and if you want to be part of the next tournament march 10th we are back come on out here to psycho turtle on march 10th um we will be here same time same, same uh pokey time same pokey channel um <laughs> And yeah, that'll be it for us. Thank you to everyone here hosting, Taryn, who's not here now, Miguel, <laughs> Troy, and of course to Arnie, uh, and you. as well uh, Benjamin for the time that he spent on the <laughs> broadcast. And of course, thanks to you for holding the fort down on the casting table all day. You've done a wonderful job, right, and yeah. we appreciate you coming down and being one of our resident casters here. <laughs> In any case, that'll be it from us back here on the 10th. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs>